from a different perspective than most people. So in addition to that, I have owned about 14 brands myself. I've exited about five of them myself. Um, some of them failed. Uh, so, so of the 14, a few failed, I've exited five, and I still have several that I operate currently that I'm building up to sale, uh, hopefully in the next year or two. And I say all this just because I think I have a unique perspective on the space of Amazon specifically, and I understand international sales pretty well. You know, I've worked with Indian sellers. I've worked with a lot of Chinese sellers. I've worked with Australian sellers. I've worked with Mexican sellers. And everybody that wants to sell cross-border comes across the, the the few problems like how do I get my money back across, you know, from the U.S. to INR? We use ping pong. How do I ship my products for export? We'll use a broker. You use uh, a good shipping company that has import licenses for the U.S., things like that. But I think that a lot of people are told if you're going to sell internationally, setting up the listing is easy. Choosing which product you're going to sell is easy. And that's actually the hardest part of it, which we're going to talk about. So I hope that makes sense. My background gives me a little bit of perspective that causes me to say some strange things and some unique things. And when I started getting to know Megla and talking about keywords specifically, it was very different than what she'd ever heard. And there are a lot of people in the space that argued with me, Tim, that's not how it works. It, did, it doesn't work that way. That's not how keywords work. And now a lot of people are um, starting to come around, even replicate some of my content because it was extreme at the time, but now people realize it's true. Okay. So the things that we're going to cover today are the concepts of how dangerous it is to follow the leader. When we follow the leader, we're going to talk about why we do. We're going to talk about how dangerous it is. We're going to talk about how we sell keywords and not products. We're going to talk about how smaller is better. And in that context, I'm going to talk about the size of keyword volume, which is a big misconception that people have that bigger is better. And then we're going to talk about better audiences. We're talking about how the world has giant audiences of people, and we sometimes think that the larger audiences are better, but when we actually hone down in and get more relevant audiences through relevant keywords, then sales become a lot easier. So these are the main topics that we're going to hit. I know this is very cryptic. This is a little bit vague, and that's on purpose because if I tell you everything on the first slide, then you're going to leave the webinar, and then Megla's going to feel really lonely, and we don't want Megla to feel lonely. All right. So let's talk about following the leader. And I'm going to do some screen sharing here in a second, so just bear with me. When we are learning how to sell online, well, when we're learning how to do anything, but specifically when we're selling how to do things, or when we're learning how to sell online, there are a lot of methods, there are a lot of strategies, there are a lot of ways that we could try to do things. But it would seem easier to me to do what other people are doing well. Like, why would I go and try to reinvent the wheel or try something new from scratch when other people have already done it? Well, this is what I call a fallacy. This is a mistake. When I was in 2015, 2016, I was really getting heavy into private label on Amazon. There were a lot of people that were um, like using software like Jungle Scout. You may have heard of Jungle Scout that had a tool that would basically say, here's a bunch of products that people are selling well, you should sell those too. Well, that was exciting because you could see how many products they were selling. You can see these listings were selling, you know, a ridiculous amount per month. And then you would look at some of the mistakes they're making on their listing. Oh, they could have better pictures. Oh, I don't, I don't think that the color of that product is right. Instead of blue, it should be red. And we would essentially make those small changes to the listing of this product. And then we'd come in and we'd directly compete with that listing. And because at that time, there were so many people shopping on Amazon, but not enough products on Amazon, there was room for everybody. So we could make some small changes and we could compete. So essentially what we were doing is following the leader. We were looking at people that were doing things fairly well, and we try to make it a tiny bit better, or we just do exactly the same, and we would take a tiny percentage. Here's one of my first products that I ever sold. It's an emergency car hanger. And the way that I found this product is I got on Amazon, and I started looking around at, at categories, and then I started looking at products that were selling well, and this was one of them. What this is for is it's a little hammer you put in your car so that if you get stuck in your car, your car drives off in the water, you can break the windows. And it was very profitable. 
I could buy like a two pack of these and have it shipped and landed at FBA and Amazon for about 80 cents. I don't know what that translates to an INR, but about 80 cents, so less than $1. And I would sell that two pack on Amazon for $20. And after the FBA fees and shipping, my profit was about $9 per set. So I was spending 90 cents to get it landed all the way to FBA and I would profit $9, very profitable. And the people that were selling these that I was following were selling about 2,000 units per month. So do the math there. That's nearly $20,000 profit per month for these. So I bought a ton of these and I was looking at all the profitability of these other people. And I thought I can do this too. By the time I bought about $50,000 worth of these for my first order and got them shipped all the way to the U S through a container. And it took three months to get shipping and production done and get my listing set up. There was about 75 people selling the same thing. It was oversaturated. And I don't think I ever made any money. It took me about two years just to sell that first order's worth. And I had to drop my price to nearly nothing to compete because everybody else was doing it. So following the leader was dangerous. However, I talked for a long time about this and I tell people, hey, you can't follow the leader. But what I later decided is this is a little bit wrong because we can follow the indexing. We can follow the indexing. And what I mean by that is our strategy can allow us to follow the sales leader, but we can follow. Amazon, we can follow the indexing. We get more into that in a minute, so bear with me. All right, so what are we selling? If I'm deciding what to sell and I can figure out how to sell better and I have these emergency car hammers, what is this? Well, I was going to Amazon and I was pulling up these car hammers. You can still see, can you see my Amazon screen now, Megla? Yes. So I was finding these emergency car hammers and the way that I was doing that is I was going through categories. All right. So I would go into automotive and then I'd find automotive interior safety products, like all these different subcategories of products. And this is what I was finding. Well, did you guys see what I just did in the search bar? I didn't actually go through the subcategories. I typed emergency car hammer. And if I type emergency car hammer, all of these things come up. Thanks. So are these products or these keywords? These are keywords. Amazon is just a search engine. That's all it is. Amazon is one of the top five search engines in the English language, the number one being Google. So think about what a search engine does. You go to Google and you type something and it shows you what it believes to be the most accurate result for your keyword inquiry. If I type in um, Nike tennis shoes into Google, what's Google going to show me? It's going to show me probably the Nike website, and it's going to show me deals on Nike shoes, and it's going to be pictures of Nike shoes and YouTube videos of people talking about Nike shoes. If I type in what is the best car to drive in 2022 in India, Google is going to show me car reviews and cars for sale and car specifics, right? That's what a search engine does is it takes – an inquiry, and then it applies the most relevant response to that, the most relevant reaction, the most relevant result. So when we type in something like Nike shoes here, uh -oh, what is it going to show me when I hit enter? It's probably going to show me Nike shoes. If it didn't, it would be broken. <laughs> So what I started realizing about keywords or about Amazon specifically is that very few people come to Amazon and look at the homepage. Now, they're advertising on the movie here. Did I come to Amazon to see a movie? Probably not. This is an advertisement. Did I come in? These are a lot of products that I researched. So you're seeing some of the stuff behind the scenes. But do you ever come to Amazon and just scroll and search and look at categories and subcategories? Even if I go to back to school, it's showing me items that they suggest for back to school. But I don't have time for this. I'm not coming here to browse. I know that if I need a notebook, I'm going to type notebook. 
and it's going to show me notebooks. Follow me? So what we have been doing for a long time as Amazon sellers, the mistake that we've been making is we have been starting with a product and starting with what other people are selling. And then we're replicating everything that everybody's doing instead of just looking at the keywords instead. So check this out. If I type iPhone cover, Amazon is giving me suggested continuations of that keyword, that search, right? We know that iPhone cover 13 Pro Max is listed above iPhone cover 13. What's this mean? It means that more people are searching for this keyword that are searching for this keyword. And there's less people searching for this keyword and less people searching for this keyword and less people searching for this keyword. Amazon's giving us a hierarchy, not of which product sells the most, but of which keyword is being searched the most. Okay, so there's two things that are important here. They're worrying about the keywords, they're not worrying about the product. Because not every product is assigned to the right keywords and not every keyword has the right product. If I type in cat exercise wheel, okay, I searched specifically for cat exercise wheel. Are these cat exercise wheels? Yes. Is this an exercise wheel? No, it's not. No. But because this search engine is doing the best job that it absolutely can to find the best relevant opportunity for us, I type in cat exercise wheel, it shows us some, but then even on the first page, their popular brands where they're trying to suggest something is not a cat exercise wheel. This is not a 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 wheel. So what's happening right now is Amazon is literally running out of products that it can show us based on this keyword cat exercise wheel. So this means two things. One, it means this is my favorite, that there are a lot of products that people are looking for and there's just not enough products to support it. I once found this. I found a keyword that was being searched very popularly on other places besides Amazon. It was actually trending on Reddit. It's called an Aztec okay. death whistle. This is what it looks like here. Well, what just happened? I typed in Aztec death wheel, but what am I seeing? The, or death whistle. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. I typed this wrong. See, that's because I'm only on my first set of copy. Okay, All right, so same. I type Aztec death whistle. We have some of these things here, but these aren't. These aren't. So Amazon's showing me different things that don't actually apply. And what these are, you can Google these if you want to hear, if you want to see something really, really crazy. These are these old traditional Aztec um, tribe death whistles that they would use during wartime. And they would blow these things and they sound terrifying. So as these bands of soldiers and warriors were approaching their enemy, they would blow these whistles and it sounds terrifying. It would scare their enemies away. You can Google this later. It's very interesting. But if I'm looking at these things, and I'm assuming that most of you know about Amazon, right? Most of you have at least an idea about Amazon. There are not many of these products that are actually sold by FBA, and many of them are extremely expensive. Their listings aren't good. Like, this is a 3D printed Aztec death whistle. It's not even authentic. It's plastic. It's still got 823 reviews, which means it's sold a lot of products, but it's FBA, if FBM, it's shipped FBM. The listing image is not even Amazon Terms of Service compliant. None of these are. This is very unprofessional. And most likely, not many of these sell because the price is too high. Like, who's going to pay $59 for this thing, right? And a lot of these are the exact same seller. You can tell just by the, by the way the picture is posted. So what does that mean? That means that when I went to Pinterest and I typed in, I was looking for products and I see an Aztec death whistle. And then I go to Amazon and I type in Aztec death whistle and I check my search, I'm sorry, my sales volume. 
Like you can use different softwares to see how many of those things are being sold. Guess what I found? I found that not many of these things were being sold. I thought this is a terrible product idea because not many are selling. What I know now is that I should have been checking search volume. And at the time I was searching this, researching this, there's 35,000 people a month searching for the term Aztec death whistle. So 35,000 people were searching for it, but the sales were very low. And it's because it was too expensive. And at the time, there's only a couple options. They were always out of stock and it wasn't prime. I dismissed the product idea because I said, oh, nobody's buying it. I was looking at the product. I wasn't thinking about the keywords. The best example I have is my mistake, probably the biggest mistake of my Amazon life with the fidget spinners. Were those really popular in India, Dinesh? It was a trend that time. I mean, it is the older days yeah. now, but yeah, it was a trend. Well, I didn't know if it was just us Americans, but we loved those things. Yes. And I was, before the trend even hit the U.S., I was in a market called Iwu in China. And I was walking around, I was shopping, and all of these salesmen were trying to give me samples of these little things okay. that spun in their hands. Okay. And they were spinning them, and they'd give me a sample, and I'd take a sample, and they'd say, oh, this is a great seller, you should buy these. I'd say, okay, I'll check it out, I'll research it. And I walked around, I couldn't stop playing with them. I was addicted okay. to them by the time I got out of the shop. I'd never seen one before. So I went back to my hotel room and I started Googling, what is this spinning thing? And it gave me the keyword fidget spinner. And I went to Amazon and I typed in fidget spinner. And there was only one or two listings of fidget spinner. Okay. And then I went to those okay. listings and I checked the sales volume. Sales volume was very low. And the listings were terrible. And the price was too high. It was like 40 or $45. And I thought, what do these salesmen know? They're telling me that it's a, a hot selling item, but I can see it's not a hot selling item. I can see there's only one or two listings. I can see that very few people are buying them. This is a terrible product idea because I was looking at the product, not the keyword. Since then, I've gone back and checked historical data. At the time that I had those in my hand, Amazon was showing a search volume, a keyword search volume of about 125,000 searches per month. <laughs> so 125,000 people a month were coming to Amazon looking for a fidget spinner, but very few people were buying them because there weren't enough listings and the listings were always out of stock and the listings were terrible, it's too expensive. If I had known now what I knew then, I would have bought an entire container ship load of fidget spinners. I would have borrowed money from everybody I know to do it. And I would have been the number one seller of fidget spinners for one or two years. And I would own an island in Fiji right now. The guy wouldn't be on this webinar. My point is, because Amazon is a search engine, people search for keywords. They don't search for products. We make the mistake of identifying products first instead of looking at keywords. Let me give you another example of how this is a problem. I would be embarrassed if any of you could see my office because my home office here is just covered in products. I've got mountains of samples of products and prototypes laying in a room. So check this out. This is a product that I was involved with called Wet Sleeve. Okay, Wet Sleeve. And what this is, is it's a product that we invented that is a water bottle that goes on your arm. Everybody's familiar with Camelbacks, right? The backpack. The, the water backpacks that you put on and it has the little bite nipple that you have the hose that comes over your shoulder. Well, there are some times and some places where you just do not want a big bulky backpack on you. Let me show you. So like this image here, you can see what this thing looks like. It's a pretty cool product idea, right, Megla? Megla was actually impressed. She said, wow, Tim's like an inventor. Well, yeah, it's very what we did is very cool. And we had professional photos taken. We went through all sorts of marketing stuff. It's a really cool product. Guess what? Giant disaster on Amazon. Worst product we could sell on Amazon. Why? Because we started with a product idea first. We started with a product and we said, this will be a great product. We can sell this product. But nobody knows about this product in the world. 
So if, knows, if nobody knows about it, guess what people are not searching for on Amazon? They're not coming to Amazon and typing wet sleeve. Now they are a little bit, so we've done a little bit of marketing. Or what if they're searching for arm water bottle? What? It doesn't even give us a drop-down menu. So even if someone saw someone wearing it on the bike trail and thought, I'd like to have one of those, they couldn't have it. The most relevant keyword that we could find that had any search volume was water bottle for running. Okay. And then we would find like these water bottles that they had like a little hand grip or it's this little soft flats thing mm -hmm. or it is a belt like this. That's the most mm -hmm. relevant thing that had any search volume. But if somebody types in water bottle for running, what do you think they're coming to look for? They're coming to look for a water bottle. So even if we ran very expensive PPC to try to show them this next product, it probably wasn't relevant for them. It's probably not exactly what they wanted. They probably wanted something like this. So my point is, if we start with a product and we invent the most amazing thing possible, but people aren't searching for it because there's no keywords to attach to it. It doesn't work on Amazon. Now it sells well through Facebook ads and it sells well through Shopify. It doesn't work well on Amazon. So my point is, I strongly believe that we are not selling products. We're selling keywords. So don't follow the process of everybody else. Don't just follow the process of, hey, we're selling car hammers really well. This is what you need to sell. Okay, don't follow their process. You can follow the indexing, which is the keywords that people are assigning to Amazon or that Amazon's assigning to products. And when you follow the indexing and follow Amazon's catalog of keywords, we can find search volume. Keyword search volume, not product sales volume. Okay, so follow the indexing. Don't follow everybody else's process. Realize that we're selling keywords, not products. And when we sell keywords, Maybe we can take a great product like wet sleeve and realize this isn't going to be great to sell on Amazon. Or we can look at products that are selling poorly on Amazon for multiple reasons, but say, hey, there's so much keyword search volume, we should still sell this product and we can do well. Keywords first. This is a hotly debated topic about keywords. I think that smaller is better. I think that smaller is better. Now, here's what I mean by that. I just used the example of fidget spinner, right? And what did I say the search volume was per month? It was about 125,000. At one point, it went up to about 1 million searches per month. That's really awesome. That's really exciting. But when search volume goes up that high, everybody sees it. Everybody starts competing on it. And a lot of people that I work with or I've consulted with or I've coached have made the mistake of getting greedy. They have decided, hey, I'm going to learn how to do search volume research and keyword research on Amazon. And I'm going to find the keywords that everybody's searching for. I'm going to find the most um, voluminous keywords that I can find because that means the most people are buying those products. There's more room for me to do that. Here's the mistake. When everybody is searching for one keyword, everybody notices that same keyword being searched for. You get very, very competitive. So what I started doing was I started selling products that were very random. Instead of going after the number one products for sale, the really popular things like this, that some people were selling just tons and tons of two or three containers a month. I started thinking about random products. I started thinking about things that were less likely to be competitive. You guys want to see some examples? Yep. Sure. Do you All right, I'm have actually going to go. The duck. Yeah. That's in my other office. All right. That's very cute. So for example, now when I say, when I also say smaller is better, I'm going to, I'm this time I'm going to talk about both things. Sometimes keyword search volume, the smaller keywords are better, but also the product sales smaller can be better. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to Amazon and I type in, uh oh, sorry. Tortilla press. So I don't do you do you have tortillas in India? 
Yes, we do. There are lots of Mexican yes. restaurants here. <laughs> Other Mexican restaurants? The first time I came to India, I was with Megla and I was eating at this delightful Indian restaurant and they had the best naan. <laughs> and I remember yeah. thinking, this is like an Indian tortilla. And Megla said, no, do not no. disrespect naan by calling it an Indian tortilla. It's <laughs> not the same thing. <laughs> but a tortilla press, um, you know what it is. It's made of quarter flour, and there's these devices that help you press them out flat. Oh. Well, I was looking through these different tortilla press presses that were becoming very popular. They're becoming very trendy. They were popping up on places like Etsy and Pinterest. And I thought it would be really cool if I could sell one of these things. So I'm looking at a lot of these metal products and aluminum products. Look. This one, it's only $19. Look at how many reviews it has. 21,000 reviews. This means they've probably sold 15,000. No, I'm sorry. 150,000 of these products. 9,000 reviews. This one's brand new. It just popped up. And they're very inexpensive. There's not a lot of profitability on these. And the highly rated ones are all these metal styles. Now, this is new. But at one point, I saw a metal one pop up or a wooden one pop up. And I thought, that's interesting. Why is this wooden one popping up? And um, is this something I should be interested in? Of course, the price is much higher, but I just kept going and I kept searching at all the metal ones. And then another wooden one popped up. Look at how expensive this is compared to some of the top sellers that are 19, 14, and 15. $89. 513 reviews, so they've probably sold, as long as they've been selling, they've sold a lot. And it's small, it's only eight inches. So what we determined, this one the same thing, $58 and zero reviews. But those all popped up on page one of Tortilla Press. Not wooden Tortilla Press, just Tortilla Press. So even though Tortilla Press page one has these very inexpensive options, $14 with 10,000 reviews, $19 with 21,000 reviews. Amazon is showing us that there is so much demand for this other version that they're giving first page priority to this guy right here with zero reviews that is $60 with a non-terms of service compliant picture because it has these little leaves in it. So what I started doing was I started Getting product samples. And if you could see behind my desk, I have about 20 different samples of these from 20 different manufacturers. And what I started doing was, was competing for Tortilla Press, understanding and knowing that the top sellers of the inexpensive $14 uh, Tortilla Presses, the metal ones, they were going to sell about 3,000, 4,000 units a month. I was only going to sell about 200 units a month because my product was more expensive, it's heavier to ship, and it's wood, like that's harder to clean in your kitchen. The $14.99 one that sells two or three or 4,000 units a month makes about 50 cents per unit, I've done the math. Mine that I might only sell two or 300 units a month makes about $30 a unit. So I was gonna sell the version that was lower. It was smaller sales volume, okay? I wasn't going to compete with the big guys. I just wanted to compete with the small guys because I could track these guys that were doing the wood ones. And I knew that they were more expensive, but they were still showing up on page one. But most people would look at the search result page and say, I don't want to sell the wood ones because they're only selling a few. I want to compete with the metal ones that are selling a lot. For me, smaller is better. You've actually seen one of my products on that page. I won't tell you which one it is, but... When I thought I was so how did you come across the wood ones? Like, how did you find that they were wood ones as well? So I was just looking around on places like Pinterest where I would look for trending products and look for something unique. And I would say, hey, I've never, this is pretty. I've never seen this. And I started searching. And again, if I was using the jungle scout method or the old fidget spinner mistake, I would have gone to Amazon and said, hey, a lot of people are buying tortilla presses. Maybe I can sell one of these aluminum metal ones from china and compete too but now that i think differently and i think that smaller is better i started looking into the, sm the more specific ones the smaller search volume and what i thought i could make these things and sell about two or three hundred units a month one of those I actually sell about a thousand dollars a month worth 
and my profit on them is about $18. I don't have to compete with that many people. My price is much higher. So people think it's not very profitable or it's not going to sell. Um, my customer reviews are higher because since I have a higher price point item, I can actually afford to make it nicer. I can spend more money on packaging and post-purchase follow-up and consumer service and all of those things. So the other thing that's interesting is when I go smaller instead of bigger, so smaller um, sales volume, I don't have to spend as much money in inventory to stay in stock. Because if I'm buying those aluminum ones and I'm only making 50 cents or 80 cents per unit, but I have to stay in stock to stay ranked, I might have $100,000 in inventory at any time. That ties up my money. Well, I can spend seven or $8,000 and buy a month worth of the tortilla presses, which means I have money to go buy another product and another product and another product and another product, which means that by going with the smaller products, I have less likelihood of having inventory issues, of having all of my money tied up in products sitting in a warehouse. And then if my ASIN gets stranded, like I'm stuck with not being able to move that product. So for me, I consistently determine that when it comes to at least the products, a lot of times, smaller is better. Make sense? Obviously, the larger one, larger, larger one has a lot of operations to you know uh, struggle with, and uh, that's how obviously you you make a lot of mistakes as well, and uh, your business get maybe penalized for that. So obviously, having a smaller and getting the equivalent result is good compared to the larger one. Yeah. And then going a step further into the smaller is better. I want to talk about relevance. When we look at our keyword research strategy, and this can be from doing keyword research to determine if we should sell a product, all the way to determining what keywords to focus on in our title and what keywords to focus on and optimize for in our listings and what keywords we're going to run our PPC campaigns to. I firmly believe that smaller sometimes is better because we can be more relevant. Okay. Now let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to Amazon, if I'm selling a iPhone case, okay, let's go back to that example. If I'm selling an iPhone case, we know that iPhone case is pretty high search volume compared to iPhone case 12 pro max. Okay, we know this is higher search volume, but if I'm selling an iPhone case for a 12 Pro Max, do you think that my focus should be on the keyword iPhone case or iPhone case Pro 12 Max? Because if that's the cell phone case I'm selling, anybody that just searches iPhone case, they're not all for the same phone. There's an iPhone 13 case, 13 case. So if I'm if I need a case for a iPhone 12 Pro Max, guess what I'm going to search? Fire. I'm going to search 12 Pro Max. Well, then look what just happened. There's more drop downs. So now there's 12 Pro Max women, Pro Max with card holder, Pro Max with stand. I like the OtterBox case. That's what I actually have on my phone right now. This kind of rugged thing because I'm goofy and I drop my phone all the time. So if I want an I if I want an otter box for my iPhone 12 Pro Definitely. Max, guess what I'm going to search for? I'm going to search for that very specific keyword. Well, there are a lot of people in this world that try to sell on Amazon and they say the term iPhone case might have a hundred thousand searches a month. But the term iPhone case 12 Pro Max Otter Box might only have 3,000 searches a month. But if that's what I'm actually selling and people are searching for it and they type in iPhone case 12 Pro Max Otter Box and I show them what they're looking for, what are they likely to buy? They're likely to buy that product because they came there with high relevancy, with high demand, like their search um, query was very specific to what they were selling. So I know this is a big example, but let me show you another one. Let's say that I am thinking about selling. Let me hit the chat. Let's say that I'm thinking about selling. Uh, 
a boot shoe tree. This. In fact, this has been one of my most successful products I've ever sold. Not this exact brand. Um, I actually sold the brand that used to have this in about 2020. But what this is, it looked a lot like this. They're these just black plastic things that drop down inside of a boot. This is a good example. For women's shoe storage. And it keeps them from bending in the closet. Now, despite what Megla might say about me, I don't normally wear women's shoes. <laughs> I don't know much about women's shoes. I don't own a lot of women's shoes. When I found these plastic things in the market of Ewu in China, I didn't know what they were. And I've never sold another women's shoe accessory, but I sold tens and tens and tens of thousands of these things at a ridiculously high profit. Now, if I went to pick the keywords that I was going to sell, okay, I've got these things, I've got a container of them, I'm going to set up my listing. It would make a lot more sense initially to say women's shoe storage. Because when we look at keyword search volume, women's shoe storage is searched for a whole lot more than what I type, which is boot shoe tree. Nobody's ever used the term boot shoe tree. But if, if people come to Amazon and they type woman's shoe storage, look at all the different options they have. Yes, the item I was selling was used to store women's boots. But women's shoe storage isn't even specific to boots. If I was able to rank my product and stick it on this page, is that what people want? Probably not. I'd probably get very poor sales because they're coming and looking for shoe storage. Now let's try to get even more specific. Let's say women's boot storage. Let's see what comes up. We're getting a little closer. At least these are boots, right? But again, look, this one's a little closer. But again, it's the same thing. If I am just looking at search volume and keywords, and I'm saying my product here, which is black plastic thing, is for women's shoe storage. And the keyword women's shoe storage is exceptionally larger in search volume per month than boot shoe tree. I might make the mistake of targeting that keyword, but if it's not relevant, it's not going to convert, right? There might be more search volume, but it's not specific enough. So women's boot storage is a little bit closer. You can see there's more of these tall boots even in the pictures. There's other products that kind of support the same type of, um, same type of use. Check these out. Now we're getting closer. And this is typically the keyword that I sold very well on. So the keyword women's boot storage only had about 8,000 searches a month, where women's shoe storage had about 40,000 searches a month. I did not care about women's shoe storage. I didn't even put that in my listing anywhere. I didn't care about it in the title. I didn't run PPC on that. I only focused on women's boot storage. And the main keyword I went after was boot shoe tree, because women's boot storage still had a lot more search volume than boot shoe tree, which I'd never heard of, which only had about a thousand searches a month. But what was crazy is my conversion on boot shoe tree, because it was a lower search volume keyword and nobody else was focusing on it. I was always page one, position one for years without having any competition. And everybody that typed in boot shoe tree, even though it might've been a thousand versus 40,000, they all wanted it. The relevancy was so high that my conversion rate was so high that I probably sold 750 or 800 sets a month just off of that keyword. Does that make sense? And then your PPC so cost would be lower too, right? Because there's much, much lower because it wasn't competitive. Keywords. So my point is we absolutely have to be relevant. When we target a keyword with lower search volume, we get the exact audience, which means better conversions. Right. If I'm trying to sell an OtterBox phone case and I'm just trying to sell and I'm using the keywords phone case, there's a million different types of cases people are looking for. I have to be very specific. OtterBox phone case. If I'm more relevant, then I can target my exact audience. I can get better conversions and then eventually I get a lot better sales. So I know there's a million ways, folks, that we could go here and I could spend 12 hours. In fact, I've done that with Megla. I've done like workshops with Megla that were. 15 hours long, going through very specific techniques on how to find those search volumes, how to adjust those, how to rank those. We had spreadsheets and all sorts of crazy stuff. I don't have 15 hours. I probably have already gone longer than I'm supposed to today. But as long as you got one tip or one piece of advice or one little piece of 
um, guidance or suggestion here is worth you being here. The strategy of keywords is something that people forget. They focus on the technique of keywords. They're learning to sell on Amazon. You're in India trying to sell in the U.S. maybe, and you're looking at the techniques of searching for keywords and where you put the keywords in in your title and where you're putting your keywords in your PPC campaigns. That's the technique. But the strategy is the thing that people forget, and that's what I want to focus on today was making sure that you're using only relevant keywords, that you're remembering you sell keywords, not products. Even in your product research phase, it should actually be keyword research phase to figure out what people want, not what people are being offered. Figure out what's in demand with low competition. Use the smaller search volume keywords and don't make the mistake of following the leader to the large search volume keywords because they're going to be much more, much more competitive. And remember that even in product sales, in my opinion, smaller is better. It's less competition, less money out the door. And for the same budget, I can have 10 different products running instead of just one. All right. I think that's my review. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So everyone watching, if you have any questions, um, let us know in the Q&A box. Type your questions in the Q&A box. We can take questions now. There was one question that I saw earlier. Let me just see if it's there. Um, we are selling on Amazon International. If you want to start selling new products, what would be the best strategy to sell after listing the product? Ooh, that's like asking how long a piece of string is. <laughs> like it depends on the, there's a million variations, but I will say this, the technique for launching a product and selling a product are two different things. When you initially get your product listed for sale and you're in your launch phase, you're going to be very aggressive. You're going to spend a lot more money on PPC. I think that some of the best ways right now to actually um, get your products launched and selling is external traffic. So instead of just selling on Amazon, using Amazon PPC, I'm seeing a lot of success in doing external traffic, running ads on Google and using influencer marketing um, to drive traffic from TikTok to Amazon, uh, running ads through Facebook and Instagram, running um, promotions and gift guides, getting my items specifically featured in subscription boxes. So get people that are not on the Amazon platform to come to your Amazon listing, potentially buy it, which spikes the algorithm in Amazon. Now, once I go through a very aggressive launch phase, and when I first launch a product, I might not even make any profit on it for the first two months, maybe three months, because I'm being so aggressive. I'm using every extra dime or penny of profit to um, reinvest back in the listing and the product to get more sales. But once I've done that, I can go into what I call like maintenance mode or sale mode. That's when I become less aggressive, but I've got enough organic sales. I can be profitable. And then I'll back things off a little bit. I'll quit spending quite so much money on PPC or external traffic to make sure that I'm actually getting some sales and being profitable. So I can't tell you exactly. I don't know what your product is. I don't know what market you're selling in. I don't know how competitive it is. But I will say that I go very aggressive for the first two or three months. Then I go to maintenance mode and I have stopped doing any black hat launch techniques. You can go through like YouTube right now and learn, search how to launch my product. And you're going to find um, videos from 2019 that have a million views with people that are legitimately launching products. And it looks like a great idea to do it this way. Don't do it. Amazon has cut down so hard on things like review manipulation, um, black hat rank manipulation, and they're just shutting accounts down and keeping your money. And it's a giant disaster. We, I think, need to stop being Amazon sellers. Now, Dinesh just panicked. He said, wait, ping pong serves Amazon sellers. <laughs> Stop being Amazon sellers and start being product sellers that sell on Amazon. And it's a mindset thing. Don't go into your business saying, oh, I'm an Amazon seller. What's my Amazon sales technique? What's my keyword technique? What's my ranking technique? Stop. Make sure that you're using Amazon research techniques to find the right product. But once you find the right product, just think of yourself as a product seller and do things that Amazon sellers forget to do. Have good customer service. If there's a problem, get it solved. Make sure that your packaging is good. Make sure it's a product that people want. Make sure that the branding is good. Make sure you're setting up a Shopify site so that people can come there and you can acquire that audience. If you do things right the first time, you only cry once. So my grandfather used to tell me. He said, Tim, if you take your time and you make sure things are right and you do it the correct way, 
you're going to cry at the beginning a little bit because it seems like it's being slow. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get you're going to get discouraged maybe because you're doing it so slow. But if you don't do it right the first time, you're going to cry a lot of times when all the mistakes happen, when you lose all your money, when you have to start over. So do it right the first time. You'll only cry once. I think that that's how we need to think about our launching and selling techniques is we are product sellers, brand owners, not just hacky, gimmicky Amazon sellers that are just trying to beat the algorithm. Again, more strategy than technique, but I think. We got one question from Nabil saying, uh, some of our products are not getting any traffic. Other products in the same category are selling very well. How do we get traffic? So if you're not getting traffic, I would ask if you're using the right keywords, right? Because if you're focusing on the wrong keywords, the traffic is not going to come. Or you're trying to use keywords with zero search volume. Look, wet sleeve. It was a great product. It never sold well on Amazon. We had zero traffic because people didn't know to search for it and there was no relevant keywords to go for it. So check and make sure you're using the right keywords. Check and make sure people actually want your product. Just because you think it's the great product in the world, if there's no traffic coming to it, you have to wonder, is this something that people actually want? You might have the best product in the world, the best keywords in the world, but if you're on page 40 because you're on way too competitive of a product, you might not be getting traffic there either. If you have a good product and you know your listing's good, you know your price is right, you know it's not saturated and too competitive, you can't get traffic, start thinking about external traffic, the influencer marketing, the Google ads. Um, there's a tool out there called Pixelme, P-I-X-E-L-M-E. -E, and it's a tool that specifically um, helps you run external traffic ads to your Amazon listing while acquiring those audiences through pixels. Meaning I can get a click from Google, someone, I run a very inexpensive Google ad. If someone clicks it and they go to my listing, now I've pixeled it for Facebook and I can retarget them on Facebook too, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, let's see if there are any more questions. Uh, um, uh, sorry to interrupt, Megla. There is one other yeah. question on the same thing. Like, uh, you know, I mean, uh, when we interact with a lot of sellers here and we also suggest them to, you know, bring external traffic to their Amazon stores. But what happens when when they, uh, I don't know about US-based sellers, whether they, they get such tools to, you know, track down the external traffic to, you know, optimize it. But Indian sellers are not having kind of excesses when they interact with Facebook or maybe Instagram while, while they bring external traffic to Amazon stores they can't actually optimize it and reduce the cost. So how you guys work on that and what is your what are your advices to you know maintain on that? What was the question? Uh, or what was what was the specific question? I, I kind of missed it. Was it how to get traffic from external sources or how to optimize it so that it's more profitable? Yeah, so uh, I want to put some light on the issue when they you know work on optimizing the external traffic to their Amazon stores, they are actually lacking the resources. So how how uh, you guys work on that? I mean, I, I don't know whether you guys have some tools for that or not, but when I interact with Indian sellers, they are actually struggling on that. Like few of them are working on, on that area, by the way, your advices are very much valued for a lot of other sellers because they are not even aware about that. But some of the very few, very few sellers are working on that to bring external uh, you know, traffic on Amazon stores. But they fail to struggle, you know, they fail to optimize the, uh, you know, cost of the external traffic. How you guys develop with such issue? Paid external traffic can be very expensive. Facebook makes all of its money through advertising. That's why Mark Zuckerberg is rich. So their advertising is expensive. So uh, Facebook and Instagram advertising is really high. The search engines like Google and Bing are much less expensive, much less expensive. Okay. And then also think about the relevancy of your advertising. I know a lot of people that run ads on Facebook and they're terrible advertisements, just terrible advertisements. Like it's not good, compelling content. Um, so there's a lot of components, make sure it's, it's good. Now I'm gonna say something that's going to sound a little bit insensitive, but please bear with me. When I see people selling internationally, and they're selling in a different country than they're familiar with and that they're culturally familiar with and that they're in. 
they have a hard time understanding exactly how to run that traffic or run those ads because it's just cultural differences. So Megla knows me very well. Megla, we've been friends for a lot of years. Megla would probably admit that I'm a pretty smart guy when it comes to e-commerce. I've had a lot of success. I've made a lot of money. I've successfully coached a lot of people. If I were going to start selling on Amazon India and I wanted to run external traffic to my listing from what's the largest social media platform in India? Is it still Facebook? Facebook, yes, Instagram, Facebook. yes. What's number three? <laughs> I don't know. You <laughs> okay. Well, let's just say Instagram. Let's say I want to run Instagram ads to people in India to my Amazon YouTube, India listing. Same thing, YouTube. Okay. Do I know how to advertise to people in India? Are my ads going to be funny in India? Are my ads going to be compelling in India? No, I'm not Indian. I could probably get 75% of the way there. Do I speak English like most people in India speak English that I'm going to be targeting? Yes. But there's big cultural differences, right? Like I can't connect all of those dots. If I were running ads to people in India, my performance would probably not be very good if I were doing it myself because I'm not a professional in getting the attention of Indian people, Indian consumers. I don't know their buyer habits. I don't know the things that are trending. I don't know what's most compelling in my ad copy. It's just different, right? And I think we make the mistake of thinking, oh, just because the language is the same, then it's going to be the same. So just like I would never quite get it right trying to run external traffic in India, I think people from other countries have a hard time getting it perfectly right trying to sell in the U.S. when they're running external traffic. My suggestion is to use professionals. If I were going to sell in on Amazon India, running ad campaigns from Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram in India, I would hire an Indian ads company, and I would get them to tweak it and finesse it and make sure it works perfectly. Google's a little bit differently because it's less based on the content. It's just more based on the keywords. But if you're in India trying to sell in the U.S. through um, external traffic and you're doing something that has a creative component, so Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, I would probably hire an ad agency that specializes in this country doing that. If you don't want to hire somebody, use someone that already has a following, which is an influencer. You can go to websites like Humans, H-U-M-A-N-Z, not S, Humans, which is a marketplace for influencers, and you can find someone to sell your products. They have an audience. They know how to convert. They know how to sell. You're not trying to do it yourself because culturally, it's going to be hard for you to figure out exactly how to optimize those ads and those offers and those campaigns to be perfectly appropriate here. Got it. Yeah, I just put the link in the chat as well. Okay, we've got another question from Amber. My product's main keyword has 13,000 searches a month. Just a week into launching with PPC, I'm on page one, and I'm bidding very aggressively at like 2 to $3 CPC. However, I'm not seeing much sales. What could be wrong? Don't know. It, I'd have to see it. It could be that your price is too expensive. It could be that... You have 13,000 searches a month, but there's 50 people selling it. And even though you're on page one, you could be at the bottom of page one and you could have zero reviews and your top competitors have 10,000 reviews. Like I can't tell you exactly, but there's a lot of scenarios in which that can happen. Now, remember if you're saying that your main keyword is 13,000 searches, I wonder what your secondary keywords are. Because you may have five or six keywords that are longer tail that are very relevant with lower search volume, and they may all have 1,000 or 1,500 search, uh, searches per month. But if you stack up four or five of those, you're getting the five, 6,000 searches a month with less competition. So I can't tell you exactly. I know um, some reasons why that could be happening. Um, but maybe there are different keywords with lower search volume with more relevancy key you can use. And for that main keyword of 13,000 searches, you may just still be very competitive because there may be 100 people selling the same product. You fought your way to page one, but like I said, the top 20 sellers all have 10,000 reviews and you might have two. Okay. 
it's going to be hard. But without seeing your exact listing, I can't give you really specific advice. Right. Okay, so guys, let us know if there's any questions. Okay, Pixel Me website has just been created from Do Not Do Net Panel and is still under construction. Pixel.me. Now, what's the what's the URL of Pixel Me? Is it Pixel.me? No, it's Pixelme.me. Let me yep. just uh, put it here. Yeah, it's Pixelme.me. Just try that. Let me put it in the chat. Okay, suggest yeah. some tools to track and analyze traffic for keywords. What do you mean? This is a question. Suggest some tools to track and analyze traffic for keywords. I guess what he means like search volume, like how do you really track? What tools do you use like Jungle Scout or? or internally, internally uh, on Amazon, my favorite keyword search tools right now are either seller tools or a company called Zoof, Z-O-O-F. Zoof is pretty interesting because I believe it has the best data source in the world and it's easy to understand. Zoof, love that. Um, but is Zoof available traffic. publicly? Isn't Zoof, it, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, because I heard that it was only for Titan Network or you know certain. You know, Zoof has networks. never been related to Titan Network at all, ever. Oh, it's not. Okay. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Must be, must be another one. Yeah, I've heard good things about Zoof as well. Yeah. So love put Zoof. Put it in there. Yeah, Zoof. Yeah, and this is what it looks like here. And um, let's see. If any of you would like a trial of Zoof, message me on. I'm trying to think what platform. Maybe LinkedIn. <laughs> Find me on LinkedIn. And any of you that would like like a free 30 day trial of Zoof, message me on LinkedIn. I'll get the message and I'll get you a code over to try it. Uh, maybe you can share uh, your uh, most relevant coordinates with us and we can circulate that to the audience. I think emails most will get what? lost. Emails will get lost. <laughs> Let's not do Okay. Email. Yeah, because yeah, I think somebody yeah. monitors your LinkedIn, right? I mean, you've got, you've got uh, processes. Yeah. But Megla knows, Megla knows that emails never get answered. But yeah, <laughs> uh, find me on LinkedIn and uh, if you'd like a 30-day trial, I can I have nothing to do with Zoof, but I know the owners and I know I can get you a free trial. Okay, Rahul has a question. How do you plan broad match and exact match keywords for your products? Oof. I want to stay away from PPC because PPC I'm not a, I'm not a true expert at, but I will say that when I start, I like exact match because I don't want Amazon to pick my keywords because Amazon makes more money off of PPC than they do FBA fees. Right. So they will intentionally find keywords that may not even convert very high, but they're still charging you for clicks. So I prefer exact match typically, but there's a lot of techniques in which you'd use broad. But I'll stay away from that question for right now because it's that's a whole different topic. Right. OK, we've got another question from Nemish. We are in the clothing category and research we should make to what research research should we make to create an ad campaign in Amazon and Google ads? Like, I guess he's asking how to search for keywords, for relevant keywords, I think is that's the question. This clothing category is too broad. We don't know what types of clothes for whom. Does that make sense, Tim? Really, you just, you do the research the same as you would any, anything else. You're just making sure that you have relevant keywords that people are searching for that are not super competitive. It's gonna be extremely hard to find um, a keyword that you can compete on for a women's shirt. But if people are looking for a specific type of women's shirts, then you can hone down and get more, like more specific and more relevant. So find extremely relevant keywords with clothing and just understand clothing is gonna be a little bit tough. So there are a couple of other tools that um, I've also listed over here. There's seller tools that Tim just mentioned, and then there's seller app. That's another one. And they're actually an India-based company. So you can yes. check them as well. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, any more questions from anyone? Let me see if there's anything in the chat. Guys, let us know if you have any questions for Tim. If not, then we've got some exciting news to share with all of you. And Dinesh, if it's okay, can we start talking about the big thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To India? <laughs> to India, yeah. So guys, guess what? Tim is coming to India in October. You can meet him in person. And he's going to be here for how many days? I think Tim, you're here for like most of October, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm here for like, I'm going to be there for like 14 days. 14 days, so half of October, Tim is going to be here. But one of the reasons he's coming here is because Tim and I are launching a new conference, which is called Ecom India Summit. And guys, this is the very first Amazon e-commerce conference that is being hosted in India exclusively for sellers who want to sell globally. This is not if you want to sell domestically. This is only for sellers who want to sell internationally, who want to sell globally. This is the first time that we are that such a conference is happening over here. I mean, you know, we, we always uh, see conferences in the US and Australia and, you know, other parts of the world. And so I'm just so excited to have all of these speakers. I'll just go over some of the speakers who are coming. But, you know, there are international speakers from the U.S., U.K., Australia coming to India to talk about how to sell internationally. So you can probably tell how excited I am just like, you know, <laughs> talking about the summit. But this is going to be amazing. I mean, um, you know, Tim is going to be there as well. He's going to be um, sharing some great insights, like similar to what he did today. But let me just tell you a little bit more about this conference. So it's going to be held in Delhi, October 10th and 11th. Those are the dates. And uh, it's going to be held in Eros Hotel, Nehru Place. So if you're in Delhi, if you're you know, outside of Delhi, you can always travel. But if you're in Delhi, it's going to be very convenient. And this is, uh, we've got over 15 speakers who are going to be coming from the US, UK, like around the world. And let me just go through some of the speakers that are going to be there. So this is Sean Hart. He has created 53 Amazon brands, launched over 1,000 private label products, and sold 17 businesses. And he's got, you know, a book that he's giving away to all attendees as well. Super, super successful seller. Then there's George Marissa, who's coming from the UK. He's the founder of Clear Ads. He runs a PPC agency and very successful, uh, you know, and very, like, very experienced in uh, Amazon PPC. Then we've got people from um, Seller App. That's a tool that I was just telling you about. It's an India-based tool um, that you can use for product research and finding products and tracking keywords. Um, so they're going to be there. And of course, the Tim Jordan. <laughs> We've got Clayton from Carbon6. Tim, do you want to tell people about Carbon6? Like, what exactly do they do? What, what sort of, um, you know, services do they offer or how do they help uh, sellers? Yeah, Carbon6 is basically an aggregator of software, education, and community. So what Carbon6 is doing is they're acquiring a lot of these, like, really cool little software tools and then injecting a bunch of other resources and expertise into them to make them uh, more powerful, less expensive. And they're also aggregating like experts in the space to create free training and free community uh, support and things like that. Awesome. Then we've got Quick Metrics. This is another India-based tool that has recently started. Very interesting um, company, and they've got a really good tool. We've been looking into it as well. So that's something that you can explore. And of course, that's me. Then we've got Chris Thomas from Australia. He's been a seller since 2013. He launched uh, Kickstarter campaigns as well, and he's currently doing another kick Kickstarter campaign. Then, of course, we have our friends from Ping Pong. Hitesh Sharma is going to be there to answer all of your questions. We've got a couple of successful sellers from India. This is going to be very interesting. So we're going to actually have a panel discussion uh, with some of these successful sellers just to learn about their struggles and their challenges. So this is a person uh, from Ludhiana called Bahar Tiwana, and uh, he started with zero, literally zero. He was telling me his story, and now he's doing seven figures uh, selling globally. He sells on US, UK, and um, Europe, so multiple platforms, and he's also doing Shopify. And all of his products are sourced from India. It's a very interesting story. Then we've got Steven Selikoff from Product Development Academy. He focuses on retail and also product development and branding. John Polidin is uh, from a, a 3PL, and he's basically in logistics. 
but he also has a brand that he sources from India. So he's got this men's underwear brand that is patented and he sources all of his products from India. But he's going to be talking about multi-channel fulfillment in the US and also how to manage returns. Because I know that returns is a big problem for all of you guys. Everybody I've spoken to, like, you know, I think 60% of people have told me that returns is a problem. But, um, you know, so we're going to be talking about different options available for returns, how to manage returns, especially when you do things like, you know, garments and all, what are the different options uh, available to you guys. Then we've got Sami Akhtar, who's running a, an agency in Kolkata. He's doing PPC. We've got Margaret Jolly, who's the co-founder of India Sourcing Network. She also sources all of her products from India, sells on Amazon US, and she's in fact exiting one of her brands of India products now. So super exciting. I mean, the potential is huge, guys. You know, India, there's so many products available that people have not even uh, tapped into yet. The, the potential is huge. And then we've also got Amazon Global Selling, who's part of the, uh, the summit. And so we've got Nishima Kaler from Amazon Global Selling, who'll be there to talk about how they help sellers. We've also got Shopify, and they're going to have a booth and they're going to do a presentation. And we also have FIO. FIO is Federation of, uh, um, what is it, uh, Indian Exporters Organization. <laughs> so they're going to be there as well. Um, so lots of different speakers, lots of content. Um, and you know, lots of opportunities to network. So this is a conference come expo. So there'll be a conference hall and then right beside the conference hall, there's an expo where all of these service providers will have their booths. You can go and talk to them, get information, learn more about their services and tools, and also interact directly with Amazon, with Shopify, with FIO, and see, you know, what, what sort of um, um, help they can provide you to grow your business. So Tim, do you want to add uh, more about the summit? No, I'm excited to come. I um, was in Delhi in 2019, and I got to meet a lot of um, really awesome e-commerce sellers there and learn a tremendous amount of about doing business in India and doing business from India. And ever since COVID came, I've had time to get ready to come back. So I've been preparing for three years for this moment to come back, and I'm just excited because a huge piece of why conferences are always successful are the relationships that are built. You can come to a conference and shake one hand that changes your life. And that might be the relationship that's built or the one piece of advice that's built or the one service that you ended up needing or the one thing that you learned from one of the speakers um, can change your business and absolutely change your life, which is exactly my story. So I'm excited to come. I would invite all of you to come bring your friends. Um, there's really no way that you can go wrong by doing it. Exactly. And, you know, I'm here because of the conference. <laughs> I was at a conference and somebody mentioned to me that, hey, why don't you start, uh, you know, teaching people how to source products from India? And I was like, hey, that's a great idea. I haven't thought of that. So it was really at a conference, networking with people. And interestingly, Tim, that person who gave me this idea also introduced me to you. I don't know if you remember, it was CJ Rosenbaum who actually introduced us oh, way, nice. way, you know, <laughs> many, many years ago. But it all yep. started by, you know, meeting someone at a conference. So these conference, uh, conferences are powerful. There are people that, you know, will attend each and every conference in the U.S. And uh, the connections that you make are just incredible. And this is the first time that it's happening in India. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, Rahul is saying excited to join the summit. Yes, Rahul, love to learn from experts and meet people from around the world. Vinita, yay, good to see you here, Vinita. She's excited to meet with these great leaders. So Vinita is coming on India sourcing trip, actually. That's a different one. So yes, and there's not going to be any marketing or promotional content at this conference. You know, Tim himself is managing all of the content. He's going to be working with all of the speakers to ensure that there's no promotional content. And Ping Pong, this is for you as well. No promotion. We have to provide value and real education and information. Only yeah, the best really content. For the same. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, this is really the first time that there's a conference focused on selling globally. There are other conferences in India that really talk about selling, you know, domestically. Amazon holds a big conference. Uh, some have, they talk about the whole India market and also selling globally, but this is only about selling globally. So this conference is for, you know, manufacturers, exporters who want to start their B2C brand. Maybe they're doing B2B right now, but they want to start B2C. This is for any Amazon sellers who want to start their private label brand sourcing from India or sourcing from China or sourcing from any other country. You don't have to source from China, from India only. 
And this is also for, you know, stay at home moms and dads. If you are looking for maybe a second, um, uh, you know, second source of income or maybe a side hustle or you want to quit your day job and start your own business, this conference is for you to take the first step towards that. And also investors, if you are looking for some profitable companies to invest in, there's lots of brands that are going to be coming, that, that are going to be coming there. If you have your own D2C brand, then this is going to be absolutely fantastic for you because, you know, most D2C brands, they start with the Indian market and then they uh, want to sell globally. So this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for D2C brands to uh, launch globally. And any D2C brand that I have talked to about this conference, they have immediately gone and just signed up. Literally, they've just told, told me like, where should we? sign up just tell me where the link is so we've got lots of those people coming and then also of course you're if you're a service provider this is really an interesting opportunity for you if you're maybe a handicraft supplier in Muradabad or Rurki or you know uh, Firozabad or Jaipur like there's so many beautiful products coming out of Jaipur that have really high demand on Amazon um, and so here you will learn the strategies of really listing the products you know, correctly making sure that your products are found and that you're also able to make sales because it's not straightforward. Amazon selling is not that you just list the products and forget it. It doesn't work that way. It's hard work. You have to keep learning new strategies. So this is where you come to learn strategies, meet new people and really take your brand uh, and your business to the next level. Ujwal is saying, very excited to learn from great leaders. Yay. So we also have a, a discount code for uh, all of you guys. And so Ping Pong has um, you know, uh, requested us to offer a special discount for you. They were not happy with the small discount we were offering. So they said, no, we want a bigger discount for our people. So let me just see if I can, uh, oops, sorry. Um, I'm going to just um, first of all share the link in chat and then I'm going to put the code over here as well but in the meantime if you guys have any questions about the conference um, you know just let let us know in the chat and what did you think about this like do you think this is an interesting conference would you be interested in you know attending it let us know in the chat I know Ujwal is going to be there Rahul is going to be there Taslima are you going to be coming yes okay Namish is coming too so that's the URL and then you can use the code ping pong for 20% discount. So the tickets are, I'm just gonna tell you what the tickets are as well, cause uh, we've priced it very, you know, co very competitively, like it's a very low priced conference. So it's the two day conference. And what you get is, um, you know, access to all of the presentations. You get recordings of the presentations, access to the expo hall. And we also have a two hour networking uh, high tea on the first day in the evening. And um, we have a welcome kit where a lot of people, you know, a lot of suppliers are and service providers are putting some gifts and there are also offers and discounts. So the early bird price is 3,500 rupees um, for two days. And then if you sign up before September 15th, this is the price and after, sorry, September 20th. And then after September 20th, the price is 5,000 rupees. So, but if you are, you know, because you're here with ping pong and you're in this webinar, you get a 20% discount. So that's 700 rupees discount. So you're literally paying less than 3000 rupees, which is in dollars. Uh, what is that uh, the nation dollars? It's like not even $50, right? It's, um, exactly. Yeah. So it's, I mean, this is peanuts. People in the US are paying thousands of dollars to get this kind of content, to meet these kinds of people. So you guys are getting it for literally peanuts. Um, and um, so, yeah, this is the conference and it includes lunch as well. And it's in a five-star hotel, Nehru Place. So um, definitely check it out. And uh, we really, really look forward to seeing all of you over there. Party, welcome back to India, Mr. Chim Jordan and Megla Sekhar. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I'm here for good now, <laughs> not Tim. <laughs> So Saker says, yes, really interesting. See you people there around 10,000. That is true. In fact, I, I don't know if you guys know Kevin King. He did a conference recently where Tim was also there and Tim was a speaker and he charges $5,000 for his conference. And then I think he's doing another conference or another mastermind and charging $10,000. So yeah, this is, this is absolutely incredible. Tim, what else do you want to add? That's it. You covered it. <laughs> I covered it. <laughs> So what, in terms of the topics, Tim, you know, what are some of the topics that you think people that you'll be covering on the agenda and what can people expect to learn? I think there will be a combination of international selling logistics, 
um, of research. There'll be specifically topics on things like PPC. There's going to be topics on product selection. There's going to be topics on like legal, like legal issues, not necessarily legal like the law, but even within Amazon. So like Leslie Hensel's coming and she's talking about the biggest problems we have with um, Amazon wanting to make changes to our catalogs and how to fix those if those happens, if we get suspended or get an ace and rein, uh, getting an ace and reinstated, things like that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is um, really the first time that something like this is happening in India. So, guys, don't miss this opportunity to be there to shake hands with all of these global e-commerce experts. So, um, any questions about the summit or anything else, feel free to let us know. If not, then we'll hand things over to Dinesh. Dinesh, you there? So, I guess... Yeah. Uh... I think it is um, very good to, you know, have such an event, um, you know, being organized in India now for, for Indian sellers. And obviously, obviously, we always look up to, you know, good content to build our businesses in India. Uh, we are always, you know, in search of the relevant, relevant information to, you know, build strategies or maybe, you know, execute new things in plan to grow. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much sure about the, you know, you know, success of this event in that way. And uh, it will be great value for everybody. And uh, I would like to extend my thanks to Megla for, you know, arranging that uh, extra discount for ping pong audience. And uh, obviously uh, it, it will be very helpful for them. And, uh, and last thanks, thanks team to join us here today. And we wholeheartedly welcome you in India. I'm sure it will be a very good trip for you. And uh, we'll obviously, we are, we are being greedy, a little greedy, uh, and we'll, we'll learn from you, obviously, and uh, we'll, you know, implement things in our businesses in India. Sounds great. I have also shared the, uh, a link in chat. I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, it's actually a Google Drive. I'm not sure how this, this works because uh, Google needs to be connected to Zoom and it's not connected, it's a long process, but we've actually uh, created a one pager where you have the discount with you and maybe the next later when we email everybody, yeah. we can probably include the one pager um, you know, over there in that email. Yeah, Megla, you can provide us and I think uh, uh, Raji will manage everything and uh, he will share the relevant information. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Let me just quickly see one last time if I can just paste the link over here directly in chat. Let me just try that. I think that should work. Yeah. If you okay, up uploaded, yeah, link will be here. Yeah, okay. I've just pasted the link. I was trying to upload it from Google Drive previously, but I think it wasn't working. But this is a, a one pager that we prepared. Just take a look at this. This has you know some information about the event, dates, venue, and also the discount code. Cool. Great. That's that's all for from us, Dinesh. Thank you, thank you, Megla, and thank you everybody you joined here. Uh, I think uh, it was good time. Uh, I I hope you everybody have you know have learned a lot of things out of this session today. And please be rest assured, we'll keep coming with the new content and uh, the similar webinars in coming days. I I see some of the chairs there. And everybody is very much excited about it. So ping pong will make sure that we come up to you again and again with relevant information. Maybe we have, you know, similar sessions with similar, uh, you know, ecosystem companies with Megla, obviously with, with Tim. And uh, you will keep seeing us in your mailboxes. Stay with us. Yes. And you're, Thank you. you're, you're also going to be able to see them in person at Ecom Media Summit. <laughs> obviously. Obviously, we'll get to awesome. meet each other. Yeah. Right. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tim. Bye.